I got asked, what do you do if you are in a free hanging crevasse fall? Well, first count yourself lucky you didn't hit and break anything, but let's talk about what to do next. Hello everybody, I'm Jason. I got a question about what to do if you fell into an overhanging crevasse, unable to make contact with the wall. The person asking the question was wondering how to make the initial progress for self-extraction, that is, ascending the rope, when you are fully tight against your knot. Well, let's get into that, but maybe start with a few more universal considerations, not specific to being in an overhanging crevasse. First, if there are lots of teams around who are able to help haul, you are likely able to use pure muscle power to haul out the victim without having to rely upon time-consuming haul systems. So let's say that's not the case. Therefore, it is sometimes better for a climber to either climb or ascend the rope out of the crevasse because A, it will typically take less time, B, it keeps the fallen climber moving and generating heat, and C, in the real world, haul systems need to overcome friction and therefore often multiply forces on our anchor. So let's climb out. Like with most things in crevasse rescue, it's pretty context specific, and there are lots of ways to do these procedures, but here's one way. First, if we assume we don't have a pre-clipped chest harness, then we will want to get upright. Now we want to free ourselves of our pack weight. Some people use a direct tether, but I like to clip my pack to the rope just above my highest connection point. This will create a two to one pulley system for the pack when it's time to haul it up. But it is also a major benefit to start our ascension, as you'll see. I want to take the arm that I ran through the ropes of my kiwi coils and pull it back through so that the rope is only around my neck. Now I can get the pack off without losing the rope. Note that we should make sure to come out of our shoulder straps last, after clipping and everything else, so we cannot drop our pack nor get a flipped pack and a fully weighted hip belt. We want to assess ourselves for injuries and assess the easiest way to get out of the crevasse. If we have a radio, we want to communicate with the team and formulate a plan. If not, be ready to communicate once you hear from a teammate at the crevasse lip. If it's very cold in the crevasse, or if the team is going to haul us out rather than have us climb out, we want to add layers. But if we are ascending in reasonable temperatures, it's time to get to work. If we have a micro ascender, like a Petzl micro traction, then we want to get that clip to the rope further up than our knot and our pack clip. We likely won't be able to clip it to our belay loop yet. So we're going to need to attach a leg loop further up the rope, stand in it, and create the slack we need at our waist to finish attaching the device to our harness. We could create an extension to the device instead, but then we will gain less progress with each ascending move as the distance between the waist and foot connections would have shrunk. This is where having our pack clipped to the rope really pays off we need to pull some slack through the back end of the device. There isn't much rope to grab, so our clip pack is going to help us with this too. We stand in our leg loop again, and the weight of the pack will help pull down the rope as we stand up, gaining progress at our waist. It makes the waist somewhat self-tending. If using prussics, because we attach our waist prussic farther away, the first move of ascending could prove easier. The longer tether to the waist connection means more rope below to pull on. Plus, our weight in the lower leg loop pulls the rope downward. So why don't we do that as the standard system? Well, it makes getting over the lip a lot harder. So much so, we did an entire video on just that concept. There's a link in the description. Regardless of devices or prussics though, we may have to deal with the rope cutting through at the top lip. And we are going to need to use our ice axe to chop a tunnel out to use as our finish. See him? All I can say is take your time and make sure your hood is up oh, and your God. glove cuffs are sealed. How often do you practice your crevasse rescue skills? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can check out that video about why using our capture device at the waist helps with surmounting a lip when ascending, or maybe take a look at our entire Glacier Travel series to learn about crevasse hauls or avoiding those falls in the first place. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.